So if you ever wanted to create scene transitions as this one, okay, uh, make sure that you stick until the end of this video. It is easier than you may think, okay? So firstly, what you have to create is a brand new scene. And you will put uh, three things over here. You will put a canvas layer, okay, to make sure that it is um, rendered on top of every everything else. And then um, you will also add a color rect, okay, and an animation player. Some settings that are important on your canvas layer. First of all, the layer. What could happen is that in your game, you may have like other uh, canvas layers. I have this one, for example, that is the UI, which is basically, as you can see, these coins, uh, this coins UI and also this score. Um, and this has a layer, okay? So by default, this has a layer of one. So the bigger the layer is, the layer is, the more on top it is going to be displayed. If I were to instantiate this fade scene over here, and well, let's actually add some elements. Let me actually make this like that so that we can see it. Okay. Okay, there we have it. Uh, so if both of these were in layer one, uh, Godot will draw firstly, in this case, the UI and on top the fade. But if I put this over here, well, then there we have a problem. So that's why here the layer should always be five, okay? Or, or well, or something like that, bigger, okay? Uh, basically. Then another thing that you uh, may want uh, to, to, um, to check over here, in mouse filter, make sure that you put ignore inside of your color rect. Because if not, what is going to happen is that when you want to use mouse input inside of your game, it is not going to work because you will have a, a rectangle on top, okay? And the mouse is not going to be able to like pass through it. It will have an object on top as, as if it was like a giant button covering your entire screen. So make sure that your filter is put in ignore. Then what you're going to be doing is inside of your animation, okay, you will just create a fade animation or you can call it whatever you want and you will basically fade in firstly, okay? So you will just uh, greet an animation that will go from zero transparency to full transparency, okay? And this is the result that you will get. Make sure that you don't uh, enable autoplay, that you don't enable loop or anything like that. Once that is done, you are going to attach a new script to the a canvas layer, okay? Uh, we're going to discuss this signal in a second. This is something optional. You are going to create a, a reference to the animation player, okay? And in this case, what I'm going to do is to create a brand new function that you will call change scene or something like that. And you will put a parameter of type string that is going to be your target scene. Now, this is the scene that, sorry, this is a function that you will always need to use when you want to change scene. Uh, so you will then have to implement this function uh, in every single place where you want to change your scene. We'll get to that in a second, by the way. So first of all, you just play the fade animation. So what will happen is that uh, the, the black screen appears. Okay, so you play this animation. And once this animation finishes, what I'm going to do is, okay, you change to the target scene. And once you are on that new scene, you're going to fade out, okay? Because you're going to play this backwards, okay? Now, then what I, I also do over here is I pause the game, or sorry, I unpause the game. So if the game used to be paused, I basically unpause it. This is because of the logic of fine game, but depending on your own, you may need to do a different thing. Then remember that our animation player, it, it is not going to be playing this fade animation by default. And in reality, we do want to have a first fade. Which would be the first fade? Basically this one that appears at the very beginning of the game. If I didn't have this function, it wouldn't be called. So the game would start like this, okay? It would start directly in this screen, okay? And there wouldn't be like that first fade. So in this function, what I just do is to play it backwards, okay? Which would be um, playing it from the from the end to the beginning, okay? So uh, once again, it will be from black to white. Remember, fading is from zero to one, or basically to to no opacity to full opacity, and fade out is when it disappears from one to zero, okay? Uh, from black to to transparent. So I play it backwards. I wait until that animation finishes. And once that happens, uh, I just emit a signal, okay? This signal over here. But before moving to that signal that is like a more advanced part, before everything else, what we have to do is to go to project, project settings, globals, and over here you have to auto load your global, uh, sorry, your fade uh, scene. 
and after doing this, in every single place in which you want to change the scene, you have to go and actually call this scene. So uh, what you could do is uh, copy this line, change scene to file, and find in files and paste this thing and look for find. In this case, I don't have more references um, because I have already replaced them with the corresponding function, but you will probably find lots of references, okay? And you will have to replace them with this new change scene. So what I used to have over here was not fade or change scene. It was get tree dot change scene to file. And here, uh, this was the main scene. Okay. Um, so this is how it was done. But well, because I now have like a different change scene function, because this function, of course, doesn't have the fade. This one does. Well, I had to replace it. And by the way, for reloading the scene, it is as simple as changing to the uh, current scene. Uh, because, for example, here there was uh, in the game over a restart. So I just basically load in the exact same scene. It is the same as, as reloading the current scene. So that is the most important behavior, okay? Um, and as you can see, I also have this signal that I emit once the first fade is finished. And I will once again find in file so that we can uh, see this. And this is basically in the menu scripts, as you can see. So uh, first of all, in the menu, here is where I call this first fade function already. Uh, and then basically I connect this first fade finish and I connect it to a corresponding function. OK, and the only thing that I do is that uh, I enable the button because what happens is that if not, when I am fading in, the player will be able to play it. OK, so uh, let me le to press it. Sorry. So let me comment this out, okay? And you will see what I actually mean, okay? So, so it will not be allowed, I will not be allowed to play the game, okay? Because by default, how I created the game is that the play button is disabled by, by default so that the player cannot press it, okay, as soon as uh, it is fading in. But well, when the fade finishes, this should be done, okay? And well, this is just one behavior, but then you can add even more signals and connect to them um, and, and do different things. I don't know when the first starts, maybe you want to uh, disable some buttons and do it directly there. And you don't want to do it here in the editor uh, as I have done or, or whatever. Okay. So I'll also make sure that you are taking advantage of signals because they are indeed um, super, super useful. So well, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I believe this is the easiest way of handling scene transitions. So I will see you in the next one. If you are serious about leveling up your Godot skills, check out my course. In less than six hours, you'll master Godot fundamentals while building this amazing project. Links in the description. See you there.